So here's the design process behind the OCD drill bit organizer, which is really fun to make because it basically designed itself. Uh, it was the kind of thing where you just figure out the capabilities of your tool and your material, and then you make a few key decisions, and then everything just kind of falls into place around those decisions. Now, first off, here's the problem that the object was meant to solve. I've got all these drill bits from different manufacturers, and I store them all in their separate boxes in a drawer, which is a really dumb way to do it, because then you have to fish for everything. So I wanted to speed that process up. Most people just take a block of wood and drill holes in it, which is a great design if you have the wall space or the shelf space, and I don't. So my two constraints are that one, I wanted it to be as compact and space efficient as possible, and two, the project would have to be made out of plywood scraps because I didn't want to spend any money on materials. So how do you go from there to a form factor? Well, the design really started here a few months ago with these little IKEA drawers that I have under the shop bod. I used them to store the shop bot bits in two different ways. The first thing I made was this simple insert to hold the bits vertically. These little cutaways here are just so that I can grab the thing to swap it out in the future. Now the second series of bits that I've got are too tall for the drawers, so I had to store them sideways, uh, so then I made a different insert for those. After just a few weeks of using these, it became obvious that this first one is not a good design. Uh, I'm kind of clumsy, so I'll reach in here and end up jabbing my fingers with the points. Uh, I thought about storing the bits upside down, but some of these have finer points on them that I don't want to damage. The second design is better because it's band-aid free, but it's also not very space efficient. I mean, look at the volume of the drawer versus the size of the bits. You've got all this wasted space here. So for the drill bits, they should obviously be stored on stacked levels, which means they'd have to be pulled out from the front. So now we're getting closer to a form factor. Next, I set aside all the bits that I figured I would most frequently use, and I put them on this tray and divided them into categories. To quickly measure them, I laid them on a fabric ruler to get their rough lengthwise dimensions. The bits in the shanks are all standard widths, but I had to caliper the irregular parts to get a dimension. I recorded all of those dimensions onto these worksheets. Then I drew all the bits up in the CAD. Uh, wherever possible, I kept the shapes basic because it's faster for the machine to cut out, say, a racetrack shape than something with corners. Now the next question was, overall, how big is this object going to be? To determine that, I first calculated the spacing between the bits for ergonomics using this highly scientific method. Those are too close together to easily grab. That's just about right. Then I cut some test pieces to see if my math was right. Then I took the group of the most components, spaced those all out in the CAD, added about a quarter inch border around it, and now I've got my drawer width. I dropped the smallest group into the same drawer size to make sure it didn't look ridiculous. It seemed fine, so now I've got my drawer size. Next, I needed a way to label the drawers and to make some kind of a drawer pull. Fortunately, solving the first problem solved the second. Going back to the CNC bit drawer, what I don't like is that I've labeled the front faces, but the unit is sitting below me, so I always have to angle back to see them. I reason that the drill bit box would also always be below me, either on my work table or on top of this cabinet, so it made sense that the label should be pointing upwards. So I cut a test piece with this little bump out that I could write on. Now, I wasn't trying to be cutesy and do that thing that Apple used to do where, you know, the shape is referencing a file folder. This is purely form follows function. I should also point out that this is not an original idea. I've seen photos online of people storing saw blades in the shops on masonite sheets cut out with a little tab like this. But I realized that if the tab was the same height as the entire workpiece, even if I staggered them, there wouldn't be enough room for me to get my fingers in there to comfortably grab it. So on the next test piece, I carved out the bottom of the handle to create more space. This secondary hollow creates a little lip to provide some purchase. I rounded both the interior and protruding corners with a ball nose bit and a point roundover bit, which is totally overkill, but it scratches that OCD edge. It also made sense to have the machine cut the label text since I was already going to carve the bit diameters into the drawers. I use decimals rather than fractions because I hate doing math. This way, if I'm using an imperial bit and I find out that it's too small for whatever I'm trying to do and the next size up is too big, I can grab a metric bit and see what falls between what. Cutting rabbits for the drawer slides is a pretty common shop trick, um, and it was simple for the CNC to cut dados into the box sides to accept those rabbits and then I had it round the front corners off to make it a little easier to get the drawers in and out. This one drawer for the countersinks had to be made double height because I'm using three quarter inch ply and the collars in these bits are just too tall to lay within a single sheet. And I wanted all the bits to sit below the surface so that I could stack stuff on top. The reason I put the box together with screws instead of glue is because I know I'm gonna pull this thing apart and change something later. 
Now, I almost put this handle on top, but decided to leave the top flat so that I could stack stuff on it, like one of the drawers or whatever else is lying around. Plus, I'm not planning on carrying this object around. It's meant to live in my little shop room. So I also did not design any way to hold the drawers in place in transit. Maybe I'll figure out a fold flat handle and something to hold the drawers in for version 2.0.